Let's now look at the bony orbits in which the eyeballs are contained. So obviously there's bilateral, there's two of them. And the orbit is the socket into which the eyes fit and are protected alongside other associated structures such as the extraocular muscles that are responsible for movement of the eye. So the orbit is the name of the cavity. And we see that there's an orbital rim surrounding it. And this is so important because it means if something is going to hit you, there's a good chance it will hit the bones of the orbital rim rather than penetrating in to damage the eye. So we do certainly see eye injuries in accidents and emergency departments, but more often there's injuries to the orbital rim because the orbital rim is doing its job protecting the precious, delicate contents of the orbital cavity. So the eyeball sits in here, it's got a roof and it's got a floor on both sides. Now I'm just going to give you a very quick run through the bones. This is the frontal bone here in brown. The frontal bone. And this large facial bone in orange is the maxilla. The mandible of course is the jaw bone. The front teeth are in the top teeth are in the maxilla. And the famous facial bone on the side, one of the characteristic, really characteristic human facial bones in purple, is the zygomatic, forming this part of the rim, the zygomatic bone. Now, the sphenoid bone here is in red, the sphenoid bone. So if I can just point to the sphenoid bone, it's this one here. Just maybe zoom in on that a bit. So here we see the sphenoid bone, it's labelled eight in this model. Of course, the same on both sides. The sphenoid bone. And this bone continues inside, in, in the cranial cavity. So this is the sphenoid bone here, continued in this red colour. We see the frontal bone from the inside there as well, of course. And uh, This yellow bit is called the cribiform plate, it's part of the ethnoid bone. That's actually where the uh, nasal nerves enter. The first cranial nerve is the olfactory nerve, bringing nerves of uh, containing smell information from the nasal cavity into the, into the brain. So up to the sphenoid there, you can see the sphenoid on the outside still in red here. But we see it inside the orbit there. Then the ethnoid bone is in yellow, which we see in here, labelled 9R on this model. And the same on that side, the ethnoid bone in yellow. And the lacrimal bone is labelled 10 on this model, it's a cream colour. That's the lacrimal bone. So there we see the yellow ethnoid bone and the creamy white coloured lacrimal bone inside the orbit. On top of the nose there, of course, we've got the, uh, the nasal bone. There's actually a um, little bit of a palatine bone at the back just about there as well, but it's not shown on this model. So there's actually seven bones forming the orbital cavity. Now what else is of interest here is, um, can you see that hole there? Let me zoom in on that. 
there's kind of a hole there going through just there oops lost it there hole going through there and of course the same on the other side hole going through there There we see it on both sides. And that is the um, optic foramen, where the optic nerve goes through, carrying the visual information into the cranial cavity. And actually what happens is, um, some of the nerve fibers cross over just behind here, in that position there. and that is called the optic chiasma. Some of the nerve fibers cross over, some don't. We'll do a separate diagram of that. But you can see here where the uh, optic nerves come through from the back of the eyeball into the cranial cavity on their way back to the visual areas of the brain, which are, are in the back in the occipital lobe of the brain here at the back. So their path has to run back like this, like this towards the occipital lobes of the brain, which is where the vision is actually interpreted, where the vision is generated. There's this optic chiasma just there first, like that. Optic chiasma. There's other things we could talk about. I mean, there's the um, these gaps here. I don't think you can see there. Uh, larger gap just there. Just lateral to the optic foramen. That's the superior orbital fissure. And down there, there's the inferior orbital fissure, which we can see there, that gap there. So these are areas in the bone where the yeah, that gives us quite a clear view of the superior orbital fissure there, we can see right through there. That carries nerves in the superior ophthalmic vein and the Inferior orbital fissure, just here. That carries various cranial nerves again in the inferior optic vein. It's a very delicate, beautiful structure. It's good that you can see it with these different colors. Temporal bone on the side there, part of the parietal bone. Occipital bone at the back of the skull the sutures in between the bones. But that's just to give a, an impression of the orbital cavities in the skull, which is such a defining characteristic human feature. <laughs>